Thank you for inviting me to contribute. Um, my name is Sonja Schwoll and um, as Head of Conservation and Treatment Development in the Collection Care Department of the National Archives, I would like to present about our work in collection care in collaboration with education. Um, as a National Archive, we provide a wide range of educational opportunities for um, all ages. Our documents can obviously lend themselves to support all key stages as well as professional development for teachers, historians and archivists. Um, it is my hope that the examples which I will present will add to a fruitful discussion about, the identif about identifying education strategies in memory organizations in relation to conservation. Um, I would like to give a brief insight into Collection Care's work at the National Archive, then, then into the work of our education department. Um, and finally, I have three recent projects where we directly interacted with education and which are examples of our continuous collaboration. Um, first, just a quick idea about um, the Collection Care Department. We generally cover four wide areas. Um, this is conservation treatment. Then we have a digitization and large scale projects group. Then one group um, engagement, which includes loans and exhibitions. And then our head of research and audience development, um, we have the fourth area, which is technology and preservation as well as scientific research. Um, and all these four areas support and collaborate with education by ensuring access, providing handling training, stabilizing fragile and damaged collection items, material analysis and teaching about heritage science, providing supports and housing. Um, our education and outreach team at TNA provide online resources and taught sessions for teachers in the form of resource or workshops. Um, for students to explore and learn with our documents, um, for outreach by creating projects and exhibitions, and then in general we have family events and activities. Um, and all the many offerings are aimed at any stage, uh, ages starting from key stage one right up to key stage five. So um, the education team offers classroom resources like lessons, themed collections, focus topics and games, and then also taught sessions um, for which they designed workshops and video conferences, virtual classrooms for many time periods and places. Um, and these resources contain structures, structured investigations as well as materials for research and preparation. So then the huge drawing point for all of this is certainly that we allow students access to our unique collections. They are allowed to handle the original items. Um, due to the current situation, obviously education is trying to move a lot of that on-site work into online capacity. So that will change things for us a lot. Um, currently, this includes the summer film project, which will now be delivered remotely. And um, they're introducing a time travel TV or time travel club TV as a different way to engage with our younger audience. Um, and this will be developed over the next few months and includes also older students at both key stages three and four. Um, in CCD, our aim is to support the activities while preserving our collection items. Um, and I would like to give you a brief insight into three projects um, where we recently, or we still are, uh, collaborating with education. Um, and I also hope that this is a good starting point for the later scoping discussions. Um, so the first is um, the high use document project. This is a long-term project which supports education by Condition assessing items used for teaching. It provides conservation treatment and housing, handling advice, and at the same time, and that's important for us in um, collection care, we are recording the level of use of the individual item. Um, the second project is a volunteering project, which we are just designing for um, young adults. Um, it's planned for a period of several weeks. Ideally, we want to do that in summer, which now probably won't be possible, or oh, won't be. Um, during which our volunteering young students would learn, or young adults would learn about bookbinding structures and help us to considerably expand one particular database. And the third project was a one day event during which um, kids in the museum, um, during which Collection Care opened their doors to teach year five students conservation and scientific skills. So, Few more details, um, the high use document project. 
over several years of this project, we have followed our aims to remove that we have to um, continuously um, uh, pursue interventive conservation treatment, but still allow visitors to view the original documents. Because um, restricting that would have been contradictory to the values of TNA and um, the needs of our education department in particular, who want and need the access to the original. Um, in some instances, we are able to provide facsimile. However, um, the project on the whole highlighted or concentrated on the damage um, by use throughout the extensive list of highly used documents, which are called up again and again th throughout these teaching sessions. Um, these documents require treatment for the longevity of their purpose in this working archive. So since this project has evolved, it's now possible to detect the most vulnerable documents, to work with them in an order and to make them safe to allow continued access for the audience as far as possible. And the project discovers risks from viewing damaged and worn documents and um, the risk of damaging further if a treatment or protection is not undertaken. Um, here, working with education on a regular basis is prior, uh, prior to the events is essential. Uh, this is so we may check the required documents are fit for use and viewing by the public and student visitors. <coughs> Monitoring of uh, high use documents includes photographic documentation, a description of the condition at time of monitoring. We mark if a treatment is required or has been undertaken. Um, an estimate of time for work is done and then we count how many times these items are called up as part of these teaching programs. And all this is recorded in our conservation database. We also recorded at some point for which session the document was used for um, in education. <coughs> All in all, we can say that this is an on, yeah, it is an ongoing collaboration from which we all benefit, um, education, conservation, or collection care, and also the students. And the last project, the third project is um, we have our education organ organizes summer student projects for which young adults can apply for throughout the spring period. And they are great opportunities to work with original sources usually a great chance to learn new skills, increase your subject knowledge and history, and find out more about the role of the National Archives and the records we hold. The topics and the project outcomes are wide ranging. They have done amazing projects. They have included filmmaking, script writing, storyboarding, painting, and drawing. Um, and currently in CCD, we would like to join this uh, these summer project or these projects together with my colleague Holly Smith. We are working on a project based on an older database of about 1,300 limp vellum bindings within our collections. We are editing these records and revisit the bindings and are planning to work with young adults in a project as soon as we can go back. And they will learn about the historical book structures. They will learn how to actually make some of them and they will help us to create a long needed knowledge resource for book historians, conservators, historians, and other researchers. And then um, the one day event, the Kids in the Museums activity. It's a TNA wide event organized by the education department where a group of 60 year five students came and learned about all the different roles in our archive. The theme was why do archives matter? And that is based around our strategy, um, Archives for Everyone, which is um, yeah, the current um, strategy for the National Archives for the next four or probably the next 12 years. Um, during this day, uh, in the morning, the students took over jobs in several different departments. And in the afternoon, students regrouped and created an art piece involving archive boxes. And we in CCD hosted a group of six, here five students, together with a teacher or a school staff member. And they learned about IPM, bug identification, or insect identif identification, and the difference between parchment and paper. They got their hands on microscopes and learned how to use them. And um, we included a materials activity. So the students investigated a variety of materials, which you find in an archive. Each microscope station had an example of parchment and examples of papers and uh, a mystery material that the students had to decide what it's made from. So the talking points for the students included what is paper made out of, what is parchment made out of, what lasts longer, paper or parchment, why do conservators care about the material or document being made of, um, how do they look different under the microscope, and um, 
can the students tell what a mystery material is made out of? Is it parchment or paper? And generally, this was a really successful project. We had very good feedback. Um, on, for the already mentioned summer film project, which uh, will now be delivered remotely, and for the introduction of the Time Travel Club TV, um, there's different ways to engage with our younger audiences. And we just start exploring if conservation can provide additional information, data can join in. Um, this could be taster videos of conservation practices that could go online for students and be used in the time travel TV episodes, or taster videos of colleagues in CCD in collection care talking about careers in conservation. The work um, depends on how this is pitched. It can then be used for the younger students or sit on the student section for the education website. So all in all, these are very many points where we collaborate and where collection care has a great interest in providing more data, the more we create and to inform TNA's um, educational programs. And they're very open for um, including that, whatever we can provide. So we have new instrument analysis, we have an MSI. So images we generate might then go into, especially when they provide um, online um, teaching. <clears throat> 